there and welcome back or welcome to the channel. Uh, in this video, I'm going to be covering the 47RE and 47RH transmissions and how to identify whether you have a aftermarket transmission or if your transmission or the one you're looking at buying has a aftermarket billet input, output, torque converter, or any other kind of identifying things you can look at from the automatic transmission. My hope is that through this, I can help you save some money, um, identify whether you got a good trans in a truck, and potentially keep you from getting scammed on a trans that somebody doesn't know anything about, thing about or they're banking on you not knowing things. Uh, if you like this type of content, uh, please consider subscribing to the channel and leaving a like or a comment below or even recommending me any other ideas and things you'd like to see. Something like this just came to mind as I'm working on this transmission and I figured it'd be a good topic. So uh, let me know if you enjoyed it. Without further ado, I'm gonna start off with the input shaft on the transmission here. So let's get to that. So this is a 47RE, a 47RH is going to be basically the same thing as well as a 48RE will be the same thing. Here is the input shaft. We're going to look at a couple things mainly on here. This isn't a part of the input shaft. Uh, this is your input shaft right here. Um, so main things you'll look for on a stock input shaft is where these splines interface with the snout area. You kind of have this wavy finish um, around it. And then the inner radius uh, is kind of like a rougher kind of machined look to it. Uh, I'm going to show you in the billet one afterwards how things are different. But while we're looking at the stock input shaft here, uh, I can't say for sure that every billet input shaft is going to look the same as the billet one that I have. But at least by taking a good look at this stock one and knowing that this is for sure 100% a stock input shaft, you can know then by looking at another one that you might have a billet one on your hands. Okay, here's my billet trans as it gets into focus here. As I pointed out before, you can see how the splines mesh with this radius here. It's a much cleaner finish. As well as this inner radius is a nice, very well machined, smooth inner radius. Um, I'm unsure of who makes this billet input specifically this is a bd uh or sorry an napc transmission um so now not every billet input is gonna look like that um but at least if you kind of can tell the difference between a stock one and this billet one then at least if you're looking at another transmission you kind of know what to look for just the, where it comes into here and then in the front there that's the two main identifying things you can look at outside of actually pulling it out Next up, we're looking at this stock output shaft here. Um, so a couple things to look at. Uh, numbering, this is like a deep stamped single number. The inner radius is uh, kind of shows some discoloration, but that kind of, you know, that's not as good of an identifier, but uh, just the general machine quality. Um, and then if you can kind of see inside here, now I can't say this is the, this is the same for all output shafts, but I'm gonna show you the billet one and how it's different, but just kind of take note that this kind of comes down and then it has this like sharp machined edge here before it goes to the output. Now we're gonna go and look at the billet one next. Okay, here we are with the billet one. I've seen on at least two other billet output shafts I've had that they've had a four digit number stamped on the back here. So this one's three, two, five, six. Um, you can kind of see the inner radius is uh, just a little nicer machining, but then the other thing you can just kind of make out in there that nice smooth transition from the uh, larger surface here to the spline shaft is a really nice machine surface. Now, I can't guarantee every billet output is going to look like that, but most that I've seen have been like that. And if you're not sure what you're looking at, say it has a four digit number, but it doesn't have that kind of same surface, you can look online look at other billet output shafts and see if there's anything that kind of matches what you see. Um, but uh, yeah, that's just some quick little identification things. Now say the trans is in the truck and you can only kind of see the converter if you take the inspection plate off here. Uh, so you won't see these raised surfaces here because the flex plate's gonna cover about to there. But if you do see like this nice large flat surface uh nice and straight and then if some of the paint's peeled off you can kind of see this like really smooth machine surface um you possibly have a billet single or triple disc converter so this one is a billet triple disc and uh main way to identify is the uh these like nice raised surfaces um the stock converter unfortunately i don't have one here 
I will provide a picture, has just some welded on little kind of tab spots. Um, there is another style billet converter that has one big large ring and then a milled in surface and then an inner surface. They're not as good of a billet uh, converter. These are the best style converters is with the individual face pucks here. Um, I'll show one more in one sec here. Uh, here we are with another converter, just a little smaller pockets on it, but uh, generally just like nice, thick, big machine surface for the triple disc holding portion. You can sometimes see drain plugs. Um, another thing is the color. So the stock converter will be like a, I think it's just bare metal in most cases, might be like a slight gray, uh, maybe black, but the aftermarket ones will sometimes be blue um, or they can be just black or purple or whatever color um or gray like the other one but just kind of take note of color and uh yeah thickness here color of the transmission is another th indicator so uh if you look at the stock trans it's going to be really gross a uh, bare aluminum color caked in dirt uh this has this like kind of gold silver color on it uh maybe you'll have a silver one maybe a blue and black there's many different colors of transmission, but a color can be an indicator of a rebuilt transmission um, as well as uh, any sorts of tags and such. So this one has a tag on the rear tail housing. Some other shops put tags there or they write things on the inner part of it. Um, just things to look for. Now this may be a little bit more involved than a lot of you're gonna get with a transmission, but say you've kind of got one torn apart and you're trying to fix it and you wanna know what's uh, going on. Um, you can have some billet parts inside the transmission. So uh, you'll have a billet accumulator here. It'll be red, um, blue, purple. Uh, the stock one is this like white plastic with a uh, single uh, band on it, but you can kind of just make that out past the valve body. Um, then you can have a, as well as a billet one for your rear servo here. Um, that'll also be like same, some sort of anodized aluminum color. I think stock is just like either steel or plastic or something like that. Um, then you can have a different ratio uh, fly lever here. Uh, this is a 3.8. Uh, yeah, you can just just kind of make it out there. The 3 8 is a stock ratio. You can have a billet one of these is like a 4.2 or a 5.0 ratio, um, which uh, changes how fast this uh, band applies and uh, the force on it. Then you can get a aftermarket, um, I think this is a band strut uh, right here. And uh, the stock one is like folded steel and they're known to bend so this is an aftermarket kind of improved one here and then there's the uh band anchor you can get a billet one of these as well uh just as a cheap little kind of upgrade uh valve body uh can't really notice anything unless you pull it out and then even then you'd look for things like uh i think i think this is a two three shift uh speed you can drill those out um hold on a moment here Nope, not on the top of that thing. It was this one here. You gotta watch out. There's balls in this one. If you have your valve body out, uh, this is for lockup. So if there's an enlarged hole here, then they've uh, improved the lockup firmness. And I believe some will have two holes drilled right here for more lockup uh, power. Um, then you'll have a different kind of holder thing. The uh, holder, the aftermarket holders kind of look like a little top hat like that. Uh, of course, this has got a B, BD separator plate in it. Um, yeah, you can get a bullet style uh, detent ball thing here. So the stock one's just a ball and a spring. Um, sometimes you can look for if uh, there's a little shave mark that's put here for, I can't really, I don't really know why, but uh, on some ship gifts I've done, they, have, they shaved this kind of passage here right in the front, cut a little notch in it. Um, you're not going to really be, be able to notice much else. Those are just kind of some small indicators, but, uh, yeah, just a couple th things to look for. And of course you have an aftermarket pan you can look for as well. Um, but some people can put those on stock transmissions. Well, that's about everything I can think of. However, maybe there's something you've noticed or something you'd like to point out. If you leave a comment, I'll pin it and I'll make sure other people can see that as well. Now, if you found this helpful informative or just entertaining uh please consider subscribing to the channel leaving a like leaving a comment you know if hey it helped me out anything helps and uh, i appreciate every one of my viewers and followers if you'd like to contact me directly you can check my website out uh which is linked in the description or you can contact me through instagram as well those are the main two contact methods if you have any other video suggestions i'd love to hear them as well too 
Uh, that's it for the video though. Thanks for watching. Glad to see you and I hope to see you in another video.